let's go back to the curves tool and we're going to create the antenna that extends from behind the ear. I'll go to the tool options panel and I'll choose clear all. The reason why I needed to do that is because 3D Coat conveniently leaves behind the last curve you worked on. That way it's easy to go back and make some edits if you need. However, with just a single click we can clear all that work and start afresh. It might also be worth noting that you can always save a curve, clear it, and load it again at a later time if you like. Now when I hover over an object with the curves tool and click to create a point, 3D Coat is going to snap that point to the surface of the object. However, once I am outside the object with my cursor, then 3D Coat is going to keep the alignment perpendicular to the camera. Just going to continue to tweak some of the points. I'll spin around and add a little bit of curvature from a top view. Try and fit that right behind the ear. I just want to reiterate for anyone who's new to 3D Coat that whenever you're working with the Curves tool, the Primus tool, or even merging a model into the scene, what you see initially is just a preview object. In this case, we need to commit it to a layer. I created a new one in order to keep it separate from the body. I may merge it later on, but I named it accordingly so it's easy to find. And I'm going to increase the resolution on this layer before I apply it and hit apply or the enter key and now I'm ready to select another tool and voila. I noticed that the antenna is a little bit on the thick side so I'm going to scroll down and choose smooth all a few times and whenever you're in voxel mode that tends to shrink the volume a little bit depending on how much resolution you have on that object. The lower the resolution the more dramatic the smoothing effect. You can also do this locally by holding down the shift key and smoothing that way. What I may do is just choose clone and degrade and as the name implies it's going to create a duplicate of a layer and then it's going to reduce the resolution in half. And now I'll choose smooth all. So as I mentioned the lower the resolution the more it's actually going to smooth. I just resampled to bring it down even further. Another technique or tool that you can utilize to reduce the overall volume like this is to right click on the layer and choose extrude. You'll have a panel that will give you the option to extrude in a negative direction or in a positive direction. Okay, so I think we're done with this part for now. We'll come back to it later to add more detail. I'm going to go to a top view. I'm now going to invoke my hotkey combination for the image plane preview option panel. I probably should reemphasize a very important point about this particular panel and that is while it's visible and active you are in reference image plane setup mode and that means 3D Coat will lock you from editing your model. You need to close that panel first before you can resume working on your model. Okay. If you remember we just created a cloned copy of the antenna and with the original I'm gonna go ahead and uncache that unhide it and I'm going to scroll to the bottom of the tool panel and choose clear and that's just going to delete that original object but leave the layer intact. I'm going to double click on the layer and rename it. Let's go with something like front limbs. And so with a new blank layer we're going to go back to the curves tool. I'll choose clear all and then new curve click on the initial point, 
scale my second point down. Create an intermediate point. Middle mouse click and drag to move on the fly any one of these nodes. Or just left mouse click on a node again to invoke the gizmo and use that to actually edit your individual nodes. You can also click apply to whole curve at the very bottom of the tool options panel and that will allow you to move the entire curve itself. And once more, when you have the gizmo active, you can right click on it to deactivate it or the escape key. So I've gone to a front view now, and if I want to move the entire curve, as I mentioned previously, I want to check apply to whole curve in the tool options panel. If I'm ready to go back to editing the points individually, I need to make sure to uncheck that. If you'll notice in the upper left hand corner of the tool options panel, you have some different options for extrude, rotate, move and scale. You have hotkeys that can toggle between these and I hit the hotkey R in order to put me in rotate mode. That means whenever I'm hovering over the individual points you can see I get a little green rotation widget. And this allows me to rotate entire segments of the curve as you can see here. The easiest way to remember which side of the widget is actually your pivot point is to remember the pointed in is your pivot point. Another option is to hold down the shift key while you click on a node and that node will actually be your pivot point rather than the pointed end of the widget. That widget is still very important to indicate just which side you want to rotate and which side you want to remain static. Just going to continue tweaking a little bit here squashing some of these nodes. Come out of orthographic view by hitting the 5 key on the number pad. Just going to try and flatten some of these just a little bit. And then we're pretty much done with the basic shape. We'll use our sculpting brushes to add more detail. Now first I think I'm going to go ahead and merge this with the body layer. I come over to the right hand side of the layer and I see the little move icon. I can shift drag on top of the layer I want to merge it to, in this case the body layer. Another important note I should mention here is that whenever you're merging layers together in 3D Code Sculpt Room, you can actually merge a voxel layer with a surface mode layer, but what's going to happen is whichever layer you're merging to that is the one that's going to determine what mode they're both in so for example the body layer was in surface mode and then the front limb layer was in voxel mode so the front limbs because I'm merging it to the body okay it's going to take on the same properties as the body or the host layer so that's important to keep in mind same thing applies with resolution as well. Now switching to the crease clay brush which is one of your live clay brushes. I could increase the level of detail if I want to tessellate as I'm brushing. And you can see it pinches while it's actually digging into the surface. Definitely want to give this brush a try because you'll probably find it to be one of your favorite brushes for creating all types of wrinkles and creases. Uh, this and the pinch brush. Now I'm going to switch to the build up brush in order to smooth the transition between the front limb and the body. I'm going to switch to a softer brush off as well. And I'm going to hit the hot keys for my reference image panel options. 
I'm just going to hide all those for the time being. Hold the shift key and smooth a little bit. I'm going to switch my smoothing type through the shift key menu that you see here. Switch to relax rather than the standard smooth. And I reduce the depth intensity or the depth value so that I can make just slight adjustments here. Just want to add a few wrinkles in the gullet area. I'll come back to that front bicep region. Switch to powerful smoothing. And we'll stop the recording right here and pick up in the next video. So we'll see you then. And thank you for watching.